Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of the Mentor Sports Podcast. I'm Rafi, as always, joined by Davian. Davian, we're down two men, but it's okay. Obviously, yeah. our last podcast was so great, so be sure to check that out because we had a great time talking to a former NHLer, which was an absolute honor and a great privilege, and we had such a good time. So that's probably really that was probably our best podcast yet. So if you guys are going to watch podcasts of of our work, be sure to check out that one. Yeah, Theodore is out when duty calls. Duty calls. He's busy with doing Thank Alabama you. broadcasting, so he's taking on that right now. But Davian, it's October. Baseball's begun. I'm so this is the this is when I pay the most attention to baseball. Obviously, I. <laughs> As I said before, I don't watch a lot of regular season baseball. Yeah, I primarily just read up on articles. I like the standings, see how different players are doing. So I, I understand. I, I have a good rough idea of how things go for the most part. But the postseason is when I do all my baseball watching. I love watching postseason baseball. It's yeah, right after postseason just hockey, about it. along with college basketball, March Madness. So it's, yeah. it's one of my favorite playoffs out of all the – major sports events out of the year so i'm excited about this davian how are you doing how's everything and are you re- ready for some october baseball yeah i mean uh my i had a pretty great weekend uh we had a homecoming this past weekend uh, at our school and uh even though nobody really went to the football game because it started kind of raining a bit uh cornell somehow won we beat yale which is kind of crazy uh especially given that yale is like the best team in the ivies right now but hey a win is a win and uh, gonna keep that uh, keep rolling. Speaking of rolling, roll tide. I mean, hey, what a win against Georgia. I mean, yeah, it went down to the wire, but Millwall looks great. Williams at seventeen is nuts. Ryan I Williams mean, is insane. It, he's and actually nuts. Insane, I don't even know how to put it. This kid is seventeen years old. Yeah, he is not a legal adult yet, and nope. he made Georgia's defense, which is arguably at least a top five defense in the entire realm of college football, look like the New England Patriots and I'm kidding. Like <laughs> the New England Patriots secondary is the best would be the best secondary. Shut up. Shut up. I was not talking about it. But anyways, they made Georgia's secondary look like a D three school. The way he was just torching them. Oh. Alabama for that first half, they the moment they Went to the outside. It literally was a touchdown every single time. Jalen yeah, Miller was open one. The speed to get around the corner. They were just killing them and beating Georgia every time they went to the outside. And I, for one, am very thankful that I was like, there's no way that Georgia isn't going to make this a game at some point. Like, it's there's no way they're just going to, like, lose this game by five touchdowns. And I was right. Yeah. Georgia came storming all the way back. And it was weird, too, because – Alabama's offense before that 75 yard touchdown to take regain the lead, it was like a slow, like Georgia progressively getting better and better. They ended the first half pretty well, getting a touchdown. The second half they played, they started to play well. Alabama before that touchdown, as I was saying earlier, they had less than 100 yards in the second yeah. half. So the, Georgia's defense, they made great second half adjustments. Georgia falls to five. I think that's warranted. I would have personally put them down to like maybe seven or eight, but I get it. I think Georgia is still one of the top teams in the country. But, man, that was a statement game from Alabama. I wish Theodore was on the podcast today because then he could talk about what the vibe was like because he was at that game, that lucky son of a gun. And, yeah, Georgia storms all the way back, com- almost completes the biggest comeback in Georgia history, football history. But, yeah, Ryan Williams is a guy, and Jalen Milrow is looking more and more like he could be the first quarterback taken. Because Carson Beck, he had a solid second half, but that first half, he was – it was terrible. That guy yeah. – I raced compared Georgia's defense in the first half, their secondary to D3 school. Carson Beck looked like a high school quarterback who got dropped in the middle of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and got told to, hey, you're playing against the Alabama Crimson Tide right now. So, yeah, I, I – I need to watch more of Carson Beck's tape and actually think about like how he's technically doing things and look at some other stuff and watch some film. But Jalen Milrow is just an absolute weapon. And if he keeps this up, I, there's a solid chance that he's QB1. Dave, and I know you also wanted to talk about another team before we get into the main subject of our show. And 
also one other piece that I want to bring up before we even get to that. Yeah, for sure. Um, just wanted to talk about a bit about the Big Ten football. Um, you know, I wanted to mention Indiana. Uh, what a team. I mean, going 5-0, and and they're winning in dominant fashion once one team after another. Uh, you know, keep them on their on your radar because they don't really go against any real hard teams. And they will have a run at the really securing that uh, spot it, it, like in the Big Ten, if they're able to really beat some of these like high, uh, high, you know, big teams. Uh, same thing goes for Rutgers. Uh, Rutgers man, money line never misses. Just kidding. We know support gambling here. Rutgers gone to the national championship game, as they say. But hey, <clears throat> yeah, I mean exactly. Uh, Rafa, you hit it. You hit the nail on the head. But uh, in all honesty, I mean this Rutgers team looks very, very good, very well posed together. And I'm definitely not saying this is a biased uh, fan, you know, coming from New Jersey, but. You know, I think it's. I think the Big Ten's going to be interesting, and uh, I'd like to say that as much as SC is exciting and everything, uh, don't turn your heads away from the Big Ten. Uh, there's a yeah. lot of talent there, a lot of good teams out there. Um, but yeah, in terms of, uh, I, I got nothing else to say in terms of the Bama Georgia game. I think you really covered it all, Rafi, and um, I'll kick it back to you. Yeah. One last thing before we get into it. Big news earlier today. Over the past couple of days, there was some rumors about this, but now it's official. Georgia. Not Georgia, sorry, a different school that starts with G. Gonzaga is joining the newly reformed Pac-12. And this is great, something I'm very happy about, but also something I'm very sad about because one of my great spiels every March Madness, as we all recall, and we can look back on my previous takes about Gonzaga, is that they were the Notre Dame of college basketball. They played in a, it's like they were actually in a, a conference. But anyways, the conference they were in was terrible aside from St. Mary's. They were not getting good enough competition, so they always inflated their record. They were always a solid team, but they were always given one C, two line treatment. And I was like, you're beating like Portland and San Francisco who aren't good teams at all. So good for Gonzaga. They're joining. And even though it's not the same Pac-12 as it was in years past, looking through the teams that are now in the Pac-12, Utah State, San Diego State, Washington State, Colorado State, and Boise State, they were all in the in March Madness last year. So this is like the yep. Gonzaga is gonna have their work cut out for them this year. This past year, I believe they're on the eight or nine line when when they made it to March Madness last year. They had a really down yep. year, actually. So shout out to Gonzaga <laughs> for picking up some harder competition. And yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how Gonzaga fares against some more difficult competition in comparison to what they had. Originally, and I believe, what was it, the WAC, the Western Athletic? Yeah, Conference, I believe so. Yeah, 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 yeah. With their yeah. 10 30, 11 30 night games. Ridiculous. Yeah, no, I, I do think that, um, and, you know, just quickly jump in on this. Um, I do think it's going to be, you know, they're going to be face off competition. I mean, they have two years to prepare for this competition, and, you know, it's definitely going to help them out with recruitment as well, you know, being the Pac 12 now. Uh, and just having such a, like, yes, you know, like we, we do troll on them for, you know, not being an actual league, like, but, at the end of the day, they do have a lot of success in March Madness year after year. Yes, there's been some off years here and there where they kind of choke or, you know, the March Madness kind of just – March Madness it just hits them, you know. Like, there's no better way putting it like that. But, yeah, I, I, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there and uh, interesting to see what the Pac-12 does in general. I mean, I know that there's also been, you know, uh, I, I've heard rumors about, you know, UConn potentially joining – uh, you know, moving, uh, switching conferences as well, just to also face more competition on the basketball level. Yeah, and then one last thing too, Davian, do you want to talk about your thing that you're doing for October? And shout yeah, um, yeah, no, I appreciate giving me the space to talk about it. Um, so I am doing the 2,200 or 2,200 uh, push-up challenge for against veteran suicide. Uh, and um, it's basically the idea is that over the course of the month of October, you complete 2,200 push-ups, um, you know, in honor of combating, you know, the sickness and disease of veteran suicide. And the idea is that, you know, you fundraise some money uh, and, you know, that go to supporting these causes. And, um, you know, I'll drop, we'll drop the link down below to, send, to donate. And if you have even a dollar to spend, I'd greatly appreciate the support. And Rafi, thanks again for letting me use, uh, you know, our uh, platform to really, uh, you know, bring up this important topic and bring up this important initiative. Yeah, it's a great it's a great cause. And the moment I saw that, I wanted to make sure that even if there's only 40 subscribers and even if only 10 people view this, who knows, yeah. maybe soon 
sees that they relate to it and they want to donate. So definitely we'll have the link attached below in our description. Now let's move on to the main portion of our podcast. We've done enough talking about everything else that's been going on in the sports world. Baseball! It's officially time to pay attention to baseball. Yay! It's I love this time of year. So Davian, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go through all the wild card series. We're going to give our predictions. Then we're going to jump into our NLCS, ALCS. And then lastly, we'll give our World Series predictions. Now, we will also, I will put a quick disclaimer. This podcast is going up probably October 1st, October 2nd. I'm currently, we're currently recording this October 1st, actually, yeah. at night. A lot of the game ones have been played for these wildcard matchups. These have not dictated my predictions at all. These, this Mm-mm. is what we're doing. And unfortunately, this is just how it worked out with our schedule. So just a quick disclaimer, we have seen the first game for like all these wildcard games. But regardless, we're still going to give our predictions because there's still at least one, if not two more games in these series. Let's start off over in the AL side, Tigers-Astros. Davian, I will give you the honor of starting off here. Yeah, I uh, appreciate it. Um, you know, Tigers Astros. Um, I do have the Astros winning this series, ignoring you know the results even from even if you consider the results from today, I still believe the Astros come out on top. Um, that's just you know that, that's really just my belief. Uh, I think that this Astros team is just very well put together. Um, I and I feel like for the Tigers that yes they do they're I don't put it they're not like a scrappy team because they do have a lot of talent, but at the same time. Um, yeah, I guess the best way to put it is they're scrappy in the way they win games. Um, and maybe they're able to stun stun Houston and, you know, stun the Astros and send them back, you know, out of the playoffs where they belong. But, you know, that, that that's my real take on them. I, I don't think there's much to add. The Tigers are not going to go far. Yeah, I actually am going to disagree with you. I have the Tigers beating the Astros in three games, and it's not just because they won game one. I am a strong believer – in two things in the MLB playoffs. One, I, as a Cubs fan, I know this all too well. Bullpen and pitching is super important. It's one of the most important things along with a bunch of other things, but I take that very seriously. I think having good pitching can make or break a postseason run, unless you're the Brewers. We'll get to the Brewers later. The other thing is I really pay attention to whoever's been really hot down the stretch, and the Tigers have been playing essentially playoff baseball since mid to early August. This team had a 2% chance of making the playoffs in early August. They rallied the rest of August through September, put up one of the best records in the MLB down the stretch. And to put themselves along with the twins, just collapsing, which is hilarious to get into the playoffs. I think the tigers just for the way they've been playing, it's going to be hard for them to flip that switch of like, Oh, now we're not like, good that good anymore or like they come down to earth so i think they're gonna beat the astros i don't have them going much further maybe they win the nlds first whoever they get in the next round i believe that'd be the yankees but anyways i know the tigers going on a deep run all the way to like the world series or going to the alcs but i do at the very least think that the tigers are going to knock off the astros here the Astros, as you mentioned, Davian, they're a great team. They have great hitters, and they've been here before. They know what it takes to win. But I think it's a fun story. The Tigers have had good pitching. Tariq Skubal is likely to win the AL Cy Young, so that bodes well also for the Tigers. And, yeah, I'm going to take the Tigers to beat the Astros in the wild card. Moving on to the other wild card round in the AL, the Royals and Orioles. The Orioles, another team, the AL Central, Davian, was – very good this year after a very down year last year where it was essentially tankful for who was going to fall into the playoffs, which I believe was the Twins last year who had that lovely honor in which they did not do much in the postseason. But I think they won a playoff series, though, so congratulations to them. Anyways, this year we had three teams, almost four, if the Twins didn't crash out towards the end, but then again they got replaced by the Tigers and then obviously the White Sox. But to my point, Three teams in the AL Central made the playoffs this year, so definitely a bounce back year. One of them is the Royals for taking the Orioles. Orioles are a team that last year finally made the playoffs again, went into a long rebuild. They're one of those mid-level, mid-teams, which is hard to, like, mid-market teams where it's hard to attract those big players, hard to shout out all that money. But they've done a great job drafting. Adley Rutschman has been amazing. He was drafted in 2019 first overall pick, and a couple years later he's 
one of the best young stars in the league. Anthony Santander has also been a really solid guy. Gunnar Henderson as well. So they have solid hitters. I think they could potentially go on a deep run. They haven't been playing well since the All-Star break, though. They're, they've they been playing below 500 ball since then. I believe they've won six of their last seven entering the playoffs, so there's certainly a chance that the Orioles can make something happen. But I don't know if their bullpen's really cut out for a deep run. I have the Orioles over the Royals, but again, similar to the to the Tigers, I don't have the Orioles going very deep or making it to, all the way to the World Series. Yeah, um, look, I think this Orioles team has really they're they're like a true definition of a team that's really built themselves up from the ground up. They yes, they made here and there some free agent uh, moves in the free agency, but really, like as you mentioned, their drafting is where their strength comes in, and I think that this Oilers team, Oilers, Orioles. Geez, hockey's hockey already soon, on my Dagan. Mind, We'll do our hockey podcast soon. I Don't mean, worry. I'm sorry. Like, hockey's starting up already. I, you know, I'm, hey, I'm Davian, like, as, as they say in the hockey world right now, it's preseason for everyone, so don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Um, but, again, with the or – okay, with Baltimore. Jeez, if I can't pronounce it. With the it, Ravens. The city, Lamar Jackson is going to be <laughs> – With the Lamar Jackson uh, team. No, uh, with Baltimore, I really think they're just a better team. Um, uh, and I know the results that came that you know came from today, but I still have them, you know, winning the wild card. Moving on to the NL side, Mets Brewers. Woo! Oh my gosh, the Mets! Seemingly, they still they still had a chance with the second part of the doubleheader versus the Braves to make the playoffs. But that first game, it looked like it was over. It looked like the Mets were like on to game two. You need to win, otherwise the Diamondbacks get in. Down three zero in the eighth inning, the Mets somehow get six runs, go up 6-3, then proceed to allow four runs by the Braves to make it 7-6, completely low Metsing it up. Just nothing but the Mets. It's always the Mets doing stuff like this in hilarious fashion, blowing it. But then Francisco Lindor, he's like he's been arguably right behind Shohei Otani as the best player. MVP. In the year. Give it to him. Hits massive yeah. home run, puts the Mets on top. Mets beat the Braves in the first game of the doubleheader, clinching their spot. Earlier today, similar position, they're down versus the Brewers, and then they rifle off like six runs in an inning to go up 8-4, take care of game one. The Brewers are a team that everyone always talks about as an underdog to potentially go on a deep run. We've been saying this for like six, seven years at this point. I don't see in the Brewers. They have good pitching. They don't have much else, and today they have terrible pitching. So I think the Mets are actually going to win the wild card, but – they're the Mets, so they're going to Mets it up at some point. But, yeah, I, I have the Mets over the Brewers here. You know, you say the Mets are going to Mets it at some point. All I'm saying is with the power of Grimace, anything can happen. <laughs> anything can happen. Look, I do agree with you. This, this is like this last Mets year where the team. Dodgers lost to the power of friendship. Oh, boy. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, look, I think this Mets team is like a very well put together team. I mean, no, they don't. I mean, you know, I, I was um, over the summer, I was like constantly like, listening into uh you know Mets and New York Yankees talk over the radio and um and what the like, a big conversation was like you know right before the trade deadline was like all right do the Mets keep going with this or do they become sellers and they kind of didn't do either really. they didn't sell and they didn't try to gain any more pieces but you know the team overall is, is you know stayed together and they continue to win I mean yeah it wasn't as great as their run before you know the um, trade deadline and they had some hiccups here and there, but I think this is a very solid team. And although I'm a very big Yankees fan, I do see the, uh, I do see the Mets, you know, uh, winning, you know, winning this year's at least, and we'll get into what, you know, other series later on, but let's switch over to the, uh, to the last wild card game that we're going to be going over. And this is the game. And this is a game that Rafi, neither you or I will know how game one will finish because, it's currently the bottom of the third, and the Padres are up 3-0 on the Braves. But I do have the Padres winning this game, and I do have the Padres winning this wild card. I think that they're just, um, you know, I think they're a very, very well put together team. I mean, they have the talent in terms of hitters. I know I sound like I'm repeating myself for every single team, but it's true. I mean, check the roster. Check the stats. Um, so I have the Padres really winning, uh, you know, winning this series. Yeah, I, I will be talking about the Padres a couple more times, not to spoil anything throughout this podcast, but just to keep it simple, again, similar to my story with the Tigers, best record, best run differential since the All-Star game, have great all-around pitching, 
bullpen pitching to one of the deepest rosters, pretty close to the Phillies in terms of like depth on their pitching core. And for the Braves, it's been just an awful year for them. They've been dealing with injuries at every turn. They've looked like a cursed franchise this year. So remember what the Padres went through last year, actually. The Braves are going through it this year with their injury bug. And now Chris Sale is out. He's going to miss the wild card round. And Chris Sale obviously still got a lot of juice left and is arguably probably one of the Braves' better pitchers. He was definitely going to play in at least one of the games in this series. So I think all of this is just a bit too much for the Braves to get past the Padres. Just Robert Acuna was another injury that they had too earlier on in the year. And yeah, I, I just don't think that this is the year for the Braves, just with all the unluckiness they've had with injury. So yeah, I got Padres as well. Moving on. To our ALCS predictions, I decided to go a little boring here. I got Yankees and Guardians. And Davian, because I am obligated to, there's four people who work on this crew. Me, Davian, Theodore, and Carlos. Three of the crew members are Yankees fans. I, to combat this, am a Yankees hater. So I will just put my bias out there because it's very clear. I have the Guardians in seven. Yes, the Yankees are probably the best team right now going into the postseason, just statistically and with their players. Obviously, Aaron Judge, Anthony Rizzo, former Chicago Cub, former World Series winner with the Chicago Cubs. They have great pieces. They have great bats. They have a solid pitching all around. The Guardians, though, their relievers have been insane. 2.57 ERA on average, which is a half run better than any other bullpen in the MLB since the All-Star break. Their bullpen's been amazing. Their pitching's really good. Jose Ramirez, the one thing I will give to Yankees fans here is the Yankees have the bats. And we it's do. really going to come down to the Yankees' bats in this series if we're to happen versus the Guardians' pitching because Jose Ramirez is really their one saving grace for who's going to be hitting home runs or really any big runs for the Guardians. They're going to be hitting a lot of singles and doubles. They're going to be getting on base a lot, but they just don't have – any guys who are just going to be hitting, cranking out dingers aside from really Jose Ramirez. So I have the Guardians in seven. Yes, part of that's because I'm a hater of the Yankees. I'm, again, I'm biased with the Yankees. I'll put it out there. But I, I do think if the Yankees go on a deep run this year, it's going to be off their bats for the most part. I think if the Yankees can out-hit their opponents, which sounds kind of ridiculous to say, but if they if they can out-hit their – I think they can out-hit their pitching – any pitching issues they might have. And I wouldn't be shocked if they make it to the World Series or win it, but I'm going with the Guardians for hating and for changing it up purposes. Yeah, no, wait. And we're talking about the ALCS, correct? Yes. Okay, because I was about to say, like, wait, there's no scenario where the Yankees play the Guardians in the ALDS. Um, and I had to, like, I started, if you guys heard any clicking back there, that was me looking this up because uh, – <laughs> I had a big brain fart just there. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I have uh, I have the Yankees being the Guardians. Um, well, yeah, I have the Yankees being the Guardians. I mean, like, yeah, the Yankees. Like, you know, you say the Mets are going to match it up. It's usually the Yankees that Yankee it up. You know oh, I'm yeah, saying? absolutely. I love that. Those are both. I, mean, I absolutely I hate when that happens. Davian, I feel like it's Davian, every year. There are two big – well, technically there's three big holidays for me during the sports year. One is when the Maple Leafs lose in the playoffs because that's hilarious. The second is when the Mets lose either miss the playoffs or get eliminated because that's hilarious. And then one of my favorite days in the entire year, and arguably my favorite day of them all, since Tom Brady is now not, not playing in the NFL, is when the Yankees lose in the playoffs. Also, sorry, when Notre Dame is officially out of the college football playoff running or they lose in the college football playoff, that's also right up there too. But, yeah, I, I love it when the Yankees lose in hilarious fashion. It's – I have – Damian knows all too well how – I have a lot of fun with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, screw your take on that. Um, and what I'll say is that I do have the Yankees going, you know, going. I have the Yankees winning this. Uh, I mean, look at the, just look at the squad, right? It's a well-rested team. It's going to be, I think, a well-rested team because I think they're really going to fly through the ALDS. Um, and I think that, you know, given the rest we're also getting right now, uh, you know, being uh, the one seed, I think that, you know, also helps us out with any injuries that we, we have right now. And having the top two, you know, run scoring players in the majors, I mean, I mean, it just kind of speaks for itself, really. So, 
And that's why I have the Yankees really being the Guardians. Yeah, the guard. Yes, the Guardians have the talent here and there and the pitching. But honestly, like you know, now David, it, what I, the Guardians I, bullpen is not going to be able to shut down the Yankees' uh, power. All right. Yeah. And, I, and, again, I wouldn't be shocked. And I know that that's what you talked about, but I just I'm going to take that your take and just kind of flip it around. And say, yeah. like, yeah, the Guardians pitching is good and their bullpen is good, but the Yankees hitting is just so much better. Yeah. Especially I, if it hits I don't blame you. Again, I think that's the key matchup. And I, we both agree to have Guardians versus Yankees. And I think we're both on the same page where it's going to come down to the Guardians pitching versus the Yankees batters. And whoever, if the Yankees get cold at any point in the postseason, I, I think they're going to go as far as their bats. I will also mention, too, that last year was the first year of the seven seed playoff run or playoff bracket fixture. And three of four teams that had a bye actually lost in the NLDS and ALDS, respectively. So, I mean, that's something yeah, too where I mean, like, one, one I, I get the rest too. argument. We'll get into our NLCS predictions too. I'm sure we're both going to have at least one team who had a bye in the NL side making the NLCS. But that's something to keep an eye on, too. I, I wonder how it is because something I heard earlier from Tim Kirkchen, love this guy, obviously Armenian, so I got to shout him out. But he was saying, too, like how for a lot of baseball players, it's not great for them to be taking three, four, five days off in between games. Baseball players are not like hockey players where it's like, oh, like you need two days off between like travel or like you take a rest day, et cetera. Then you get back and ready to go. For baseball players, it's best that they just keep playing day after day after day and keep that rotation, keep that, keep their health up, keep their stamina up, keep their fitness up. So it's something that I don't know if it's going to be in effect this year. We'll see. But I did want to note it because yeah. last year was the first time we saw two teams on each side get buys, and I think it, I think it favored the wild card teams because they were. That's that's what I was saying too with a team like Detroit if they were, the argument for them potentially making a deep run would be the fact that they've been playing play, play, playoff baseball since, like, early August, mid-August. Yeah. But, yeah, so that'll be interesting. I did want to touch on that. I Moving mean, on, yeah. LCS. I have the Padres versus Phillies. I have the Padres over the Phillies, as I mentioned before. The Dodgers have great bats. Their pitching's been a little up and down. They've had times where their pitching's – kind of rough it's gotten better over the past couple of months as it was improving but i just like the padres a lot this year again i think they have a really deep team it felt like everything went wrong for them last year i feel like this year everything's gonna go right for them and again just being one of the hotter teams on the stretch having solid pitching as a whole having the bats too you have tatis jr and a bunch of other guys who can really really come together and do well for the padres so i have the padres over the phillies the phillies as i mentioned previously have a lot of depth at their pitching, and I think that's going to take them far. But I just think the Padres are the best team in the NL this year. Yeah, uh, I'm going to have to disagree with that. Um, I do have the Padres in the NLCS. I also have the Mets. It's all I'm about the Mets, telling baby. You, the power of Grimace is going to carry these Mets. This Mets team, I think, what, you know, I think with, you know, there's, you know, at the end of the day, right, when it comes to baseball playoffs, it's really a completely brand new field. Like you completely like everything that happened in the past season, the past, you know, whatever how many games it was, it doesn't matter anymore, right? It's playoff baseball. And I really think that the Mets are gonna get in such a rhythm and such a click, it's gonna carry them to the NLCS and through the NLCS when they beat the Padres. I do agree with you with the Padres beating the Dodgers on the same merits, being that you know the Dodgers uh, pitching has been shaky, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if you know if the Dodgers make it in, given just the fact that well, I mean like look at their hitting power, you know Shohei, Mookie Betts, uh, I mean I could keep I could keep I could list the names, it would take me t- five minutes to list them all. Um, so with that being said, my World Series matchup is a New York state of mind Subway series between the New York Yankees and the New York Mets. I call, it, call me that, crazy, but did sorry to damper this, but did someone predict the Yankees Mets World Series? 
either at the start of the year or in years past. I, I don't remember. I, I have to look back on it, but that sounds very familiar. Like someone predicted that. It wasn't me. I just don't know. I, I feel like this sounds familiar. It might have been you. Possibly. possibly it could have been you. Maybe, maybe. 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 But anyways, um, maybe. I'll, I, I won't steal your thunder any longer. Continue. Yeah. Uh, but I have the Yankees winning the World Series. The Juan Soto signing paying off for yeah, well, what are signing? What? Yeah, his cut this part out. And I have the you know Juan Soto and Aaron Judge carrying us through, and you know really beating the New York Mets and showing that the Yankees are still kings of New York. And Aaron Boone gets to keep his job. Sure. Yeah, I I feel like the worst case scenario for at least me personally. Is a Yankees Dodgers World Series? ESPN would love it. The views, don't get me wrong, it would be one of the most watched World Series in recent years, if not further. And we went from last year, which was Rangers Diamondbacks, which I like the storylines for both those teams, but the, there's not large fan bases. They're, they're not large enough markets to where it's the Dodgers versus the Yankees. So Dodgers versus Yankees would quite literally break the internet. But yeah, I. I, I think if it hasn't been obvious already, I got Manny Machado, Francis Tatis Jr., the boys beating the Guardians in six. I have the Padres winning the World Series for all my previous reasons before. And, yeah, we'll see what happens. I, I'd i be crazy. I, like, I, it feels kind of crazy picking the Padres going this far. It feels like they've had some high hopes for the past couple of years. But I, I think this year they finally put it together. They've been playing again so well down the stretch and just in general this year everything's gone right for them and this can certainly turn into everything just goes wrong the moment the postseason starts but we'll see and that's the fun about postseason baseball it's been more and more chaotic over the past couple years especially again no one I mean there's definitely people who predicted a Rangers Diamondbacks World Series but most pundits did not have a Rangers Diamondbacks World Series to wild making it that far so Anything can happen. That's the fun about postseason baseball as well. Every game is, is. and every pitch is a chess match and a different move. So we'll see what happens. But for one, one thing's for sure, postseason baseball is back. And we have to do a podcast about this because I love postseason baseball. It's great. But anyways, that'll do it for this edition of the Bench More Sports Podcast. We hope you enjoyed. For Damian, I'm Rafi. Have a good one. Enjoy postseason baseball. And as I mentioned previously, it's officially October. See ya. Yes.